Turning our attention now to the ASX, here's Matt Burney and Bulls and Bears with the latest public company views and interviews. Welcome to Bulls and Bears, brought to you today by mineral explorer Mount Ridley Mines, ASX code MRD. I'm Matt Burney and I'm joined now by Mount Ridley's David Crook. Hi Dave. G'day Matt. Now over the past year and a half, Mount Ridley Mines has transformed itself from an iron ore and base metals explorer to a rare earth front runner through its namesake project near Esperance in WA. The project takes in about 3,000 400 square kilometres and is considered prospective for an assortment of rare earths that are critical to the global clean energy push. Okay, David, how do you know you have rare earths on your hands at your Mount Ridley project and what style of rare earths are they? We believe that the style of mineralisation is ionic absorption clay, which is a, a type of deposit that's found in China. These can be very big deposits and they tend to be dominated by heavy rare earth elements. The company's been associated with the project for over a decade and previously had done some substantial programs of drilling for nickel. Now we had a lot of the samples in storage and so when a geochemical consultant came and said to us, let's have a look at these for rare earths, we were able to shunt them straight into the lab and we reassayed over 3,500 uh, metres of drilling and a lot of them, at least 50% of them, came back anomalous and rare earths. A subsequent work showed that 489 samples had at least 800 ppm of recoverable TREO. What sort of rare earths are you seeing out there and what are they typically used for? Well, we're seeing terbium, we're seeing dysprosium, uh, as well as a few of the other ones that people are aware of. And generally, these things are important for magnets. As magnets and motors and turbines start spinning, they demagnetise, and rare earths are important to stop that demagnetisation. So they're part of the electric vehicle juggernaut? And the wind turbine juggernaut as well. Okay, now ionic clay style rare earths are a little unusual. How do they compare to the more traditional hard rock rare earths in terms of, say, mining and processing? Well, for starters, the ionic clay deposits are much, much larger. They're shallow and they are soft rock, so they're quite easy to mine. They're very easy to treat and it's a much bigger process and potential for output. How big do you think this project could be? Are there any early indicators? What sort of strike are you seeing at the moment across those samples? Well, as you said, Matt, we've got 3,400 square kilometres out there and there are scatterings of rare earth from old drilling all through that. The initial drilling was over 20 25 kilometres by a width of at least three kilometres, so you can tell that there's a fair amount of tonnes before that. The first round of drilling that we are going to do is going to try and infill about 180 square kilometres, looking for this band of clays that are about 10 metres thick. So these are big tonnages we're talking about. And when will that first drill program start? We announced recently the rig had arrived on site. We're kicking it off now and subject to results, we're just going to be keeping on drilling and our objective is to have our first mineral resources out by the end of the year. David Crook from Mount Ridley Mines. Thanks for joining me on Bulls and Bears today. And remember, we're only here to give you information, not advice, which you should, of course, seek independently. I'm Matt Burney, and this is Bulls and Bears. For more public company CEO interviews, go to the Money page on the 6PR, 2GB and 3AW websites and click the Public Companies tab.